In our last lab, we examined a terrestrial invertebrate, the earthworm. In this lab, we will take a close look at the external and internal anatomy of a freshwater aquatic invertebrate, the crayfish. The crayfish is a crustacean, which is a hard-shelled arthropod that is easily recognized by its two large claws. As we examine the external anatomy, we notice that the body of the crayfish is divided into two regions, the cephalothorax and the abdomen. The abdomen is divided into six segments that end with three fins, which make up the tail fan. The crayfish's body is covered with a hard exoskeleton made of chitin and calcium carbonate. The exoskeleton of the crayfish we are dissecting has a reddish-brown color, but crayfish may be black, brown, blue, white, or other colors. The part of the exoskeleton covering the cephalothorax is the carapace. The carapace covers the back and sides of the cephalothorax, but it does not fit tightly against the body. There is a space between the body and the carapace so water can circulate through the gills. The exoskeleton has a movable joint between the cephalothorax and the abdomen to allow the crayfish to move its tail. Although the head and thorax are fused into a single segment, which is the cephalothorax, there is a visible boundary between the head and the thorax. This boundary is called the cervical groove. The triangular-shaped part of the carapace between the eyes is the rostrum. The crayfish has two compound eyes, which extend above the body on eye stalks. Like all arthropods, a crayfish has jointed appendages. At the anterior end are two or three pairs of jointed appendages called antennae. Antennae are sensory organs for the crayfish's senses of touch and smell. One pair of antennae is long, but crayfish also have one or more pairs of shorter antennae called antennules. This particular species has two pairs of antennules. The other appendages are best seen if we flip the crayfish onto its dorsal side. The longest appendages are the two long chelipeds. Each chelipede is equipped with a large claw for capturing prey. After the crayfish catches its prey, the chelipeds pass food to three pairs of shorter appendages called maxillipeds, which pass the food to the mouth. To see the maxillipeds in action, let's look at a live crayfish similar to one in our lab. A pair of mandibles line the mouth one mandible on the left and one on the right. The mandibles are hard, tooth-like appendages that work back and forth to cut the crayfish's food into small pieces. Next to the mandibles are two pairs of tiny mouthparts called maxillae. Maxillae wave back and forth to push water into the space between the carapace and the body to circulate water over the gills. The crayfish has four pairs of walking legs located along the side of the cephalothorax. Along the ventral side of the abdomen are several pairs of jointed appendages called swimmerets. Swimmerets aid in swimming and in reproduction. Now that we've examined the external anatomy of the crayfish, let's turn our attention to the internal anatomy. To see the internal organs of the crayfish, we need to remove a portion of the carapace. We need to use pins to hold the specimen in place while we make the incisions. After the crayfish is secure, we insert the point of the scissors into the joint between the cephalothorax and the abdomen, and then make an incision along the side of the cephalothorax up into the rostrum. Next, we make a transverse incision across the rostrum just behind the eyes. Then, we make another incision back down the opposite side of the carapace to the posterior end of the carapace. 
Some of the crayfish's internal organs may be stuck to the carapace, so we need to gently scrape them loose while lifting up the incised portion of the carapace. From the medial incision we made earlier, we cut along the cervical groove to the bottom of the carapace. Then, we carefully remove the carapace and repeat the procedure on the opposite side. Next, we need to remove the exoskeleton covering the dorsal side of the abdomen. We make an incision along the top of the abdomen to the tail fan. We carefully lift off each segment of the exoskeleton covering the abdomen. Now we can see some of the organs of the digestive system. The crayfish has two stomachs, the cardiac stomach and the pyloric stomach. This line extending the length of the abdomen is the intestine, which ends at the anus. The crayfish has an open circulatory system, which pumps hemolymph instead of blood. Its heart is located above the pyloric stomach. We can also see the dorsal artery, which carries hemolymph away from the heart. The crayfish uses gills to extract oxygen from water. At the base of the crayfish's two large antennae are the green glands. The green glands are part of the crayfish's excretory system. They filter liquid waste from the crayfish's hemolymph. The nervous system is quite simple, consisting of groups of ganglia and a ventral nerve cord. Crustaceans are a diverse group of invertebrates. However, by examining the anatomy of the crayfish, we can get a good representation of the anatomy of all crustaceans. In our next lab, we will turn our attention to the plant kingdom. At this time, proceed with the corresponding activities. <laughs>